butterflies in this video is going to be my July wrap up. So y'all, in the month of July, I read a total of five books. Three of them were graphic novels, but I'm so proud that I exceeded my monthly usual. That is not what I wanted to say, but that is what came out. But y'all know what I'm talking about. I usually read my monthly average. There we go. Because I usually just read four books a month. But I read, I read five, so I broke my average again, so I'm proud of myself. The first book that I completed in July was And I Darkened by Kirsten Wright, and I gave this book a four out of five stars. And this was my Ravenclaw Recommended Reads pick that I picked out of my jar. And I really love this book. The second book of this series, The Conqueror Saga, came out June 27th or June 26th. It came out the end of June. So I'm going to see if my library have that like in the coming months, but not right now because I have a whole bunch of other stuff that I plan on reading right now. But I am going to see if my library has that eventually because I know it's a new book. It might take a while. But this book was so amazing. If y'all don't know what this book about, this book is supposed to be a retelling of Vlad the Impaler, which I didn't know anything about him anyway. But it's supposed to be a retelling about him, but in gender reversal. And I enjoyed this so freaking much. It was just so much action and so much drama going on. And it's just so much expected shit happening that I didn't think was going to happen in this book. That I did not think was going to go down in this book. But I enjoyed it and it was amazing. So, the reason it got four stars instead of five stars is I enjoyed it so much. That I felt like it was going on a roller coaster ride. Where some parts were really good and then we'll drop. And then we'll go back up to a climax and it will drop for a few pages. And I, did, I got tired of that because it was moving slow in those in-between climax areas. And I didn't I didn't really like it because it made me want to just skip through the pages. And that's not good when you're reading a book. So give it a four out of five stars. And that was the first book I finished in July. Second book that I completed in the month of July was Miss Marvel Volume 1 by G. Willow Wilson. Let me, let me. Yes, G. Willow Wilson. And I gave this book a two out of five stars. I was disappointed, very disappointed by it because this is a hyped up graphic novel on booktube. Everybody talks about Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel is so great. I did not like it. Like, it was very boring to me. And at the same time, and it, the graphics wasn't even enough to save it because the graphics weren't anything for me to really get excited about and hyped up about, which is what was killing me because I'm like, the graphics are bad. And the plot isn't, it's boring. So, it was nothing keeping me. I just, I wasn't impressed with it. So, I, I, no, I won't, I won't be continuing with the Miss Marvel series. Like, I, I just was not impressed and I'm very disappointed in the hype that this book is just overhyped. This, I, I didn't like it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I didn't like it. So, yeah. The third book that I completed in the month of July is not Lumberjanes, <laughs> Volume 2 by Noelle Stevens. And I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This is also another graphic novel that I was not impressed with. Um, volume 1, I like, but Volume 2, I just, I don't like it. And I won't be continuing with the last two volumes in the series because it wouldn't make any sense for me to go on this roller coaster. Oh, I like this volume and I hated this one. I did not like it. It was, it was kind of like, uh, it was, the story itself was kind of like an afterthought to me. It, it wasn't really anything that was keeping me engaged. It just really just, I guess, it, it didn't even really satisfy like my curiosity of what was going on in the first volume so it wasn't even a satisfying ending to the drama going on in volume one it was just an ending you know it was just something to end it all and that's how i felt it was kind of boring. the story was boring to me and the only part that kept me from giving this a two stars versus the three stars that it got was the cover gallery at the end of the graphic novel because that artwork was amazing that is the only thing that gave it three stars instead of two stars but I just, I didn't like it. This is another series that I think is overhyped in the graphic novel world slash booktube world because booktube has hyped Lumberjanes up too. But I don't know, maybe it's just me. Again, maybe it's just me. But I didn't really care for Lumberjanes. I just, I won't continue with it because I'm just, I'm not. It's not worth it to me. It, it wasn't really all that for me. The fourth book that I completed in July was Glass by Ellen Hopkins. And this is, can I finish? Okay. And this is the second book in the Crank series, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it, but I hated, I hated, I hated Christina's attitude. Like, her attitude was pissing me off. Like, the book was good, but her attitude was so stink and nasty, and I just, I don't want to get into it. I did a review for it.
for it because if I get into it I'm gonna rant about it but it was okay it was really good but her attitude did it for me so I did the review I'm gonna link it in the eye for you guys to check it out because she pissed me off to the highest level of festivity with her attitude and her actions it was just like she didn't care. And the last book that I read in the month of July is A.D. New Orleans After the Deluge by Josh Newfield. I think I said his last name correctly. I gave, this is also a graphic novel and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars because it was amazing. I am going to talk about this one a little bit because I did record a review for it but after I edited it and everything made a thumbnail all pretty, I deleted the video on accident and I had can I finish? This is the last part, baby. I promise. Give me five minutes. Okay. So, after I I had already edited it and everything, I deleted it off my flash drive by accident. And it wasn't just a matter of just going back and editing it again. I had already deleted the video off of my camera. So, I didn't even have the original video anymore. And I was not recording this review again. I'm sorry. I was just... I got upset when I realized I did that and this was not going to be a recorded video. So I'm going to talk about this for a little while. So this was, this is a graphic novel about, and it follows seven, seven victims of Katrina in New Orleans. And it's like real stories. It's based on, it's real people that this story is based on. He actually interviewed these seven people about what they went through with Katrina. And that is what this graphic novel is depicting. I love this so much because I live in Louisiana and I've been living in Louisiana all my life. When Katrina hit, I was nine years old. Um, I lived in La Plaza instead of Metairie where I live now. I lived in La Plaza at the time when Katrina hit and that's like an hour away from New Orleans, I want to say. An hour, 45 minutes, you know, taking in traffic and, you know, how you drive. So I wasn't that far away from New Orleans anyway. And, oh my God, y'all. Like, I, like, reading this, it was like, it was like so much truth in it and I appreciated so much stuff that he added in it because the different people that he followed all experienced different things throughout the storm. It's not just one person. It's not they all went through the same thing. It went through different things because one couple actually left so it, it follows them on their journey of if they were going to leave or not for the storm and when they did leave and everything they did, everything they had to go through and what they had to come back to. It followed... A, it followed a, a very hard-headed character that she actually left in the middle of the storm and went back to her house. So it followed that. It followed, and it also followed um, two guys that decided to stay with um, their grocery store, which was um, that was stupid. But people do it, it you know. what I'm saying it's following real people, so you know it happens. That was people wasn't thinking that Katrina was going to be as bad as it was so it was like it was like should I leave or should I not and it followed a doctor who never leaves and you know he actually threw a party in his house while the storm was going on so it followed different things happening but it all hit the same it all hit home for me anyway because it was like just so much stuff happened that included you know death tolls and how things happened how people died how FEMA and Red Cross failed New Orleans how the how New Orleans is just so dis dis distraught. Even now, today, everything is still not rebuilt today. This house is still messed up today. It's abandoned that people never came back to reclaim. That's not knocked down. Or you have this empty field where houses or places used to be. And no one put anything back on it. It's it's still kind of a mess in New Orleans. Not, a, not as bad as it was then. But they didn't finish uh, cleaning stuff up. And it goes to show you just how long people had to sit there. How long people had to sit there and wait. For people to, to to come and give them help just to get them water how long people had to wait for them to get out you know so it's like it was a lot reading it but it was very good and i did recommend this on goodreads to everyone because i think this is something that everyone should read simply because of the fact that it's following like a big like a, a big storm in history that really made its mark especially in new orleans like it just i think that people need to read it just to know everything that's going on Everything that actually went on, how people really felt, how people really went to. Because a lot of things I always hear from people that, you know, didn't experience Katrina is, Why didn't you just leave? They would have just left being hard-headed. They would have just left, you know, it wouldn't have been like that. And reading this book, you see why a lot of people didn't leave. People couldn't afford, everybody couldn't afford to leave. They gave the warning for people to leave 
a few hours before the storm hit. So people that people trapped on bridges because the traffic was that bad and bridges fell apart. So people was trapped on bridges during the storm. Elderly couldn't leave. Like a lot of people, a lot of the old people in nursing homes and stuff, they didn't have the means to get a lot of the, the sick people out. You know, and then you just had those people that, you know, never leave and it just didn't expect the storm to be that bad because hurricanes come through Louisiana all the time and they're, they're never that bad. So no one ever leaves, really. No one pays attention to them because it's never that bad. So that's uh, there's so many reasons why people didn't leave. You can't just say people was being hard-headed because that's, that's not just it. It, it. You have to understand everything of why, everything about Louisiana to know why a lot of people did not leave. So yeah, now I'm done talking about that book since I actually noon in my review. That is all I have for my July wrap-up. All of these books were library books, pretty much. Um, I had Miss Marvel on my Kindle, but everything else were all of these books were library books. So I had, I, I guess, I had a big library reading month in July. But yeah, that's everything I want to talk about in the month of July. I guess I had a so-so reading month because it seemed like half the books I read were really good and then half the books I was like disappointed by. So I guess it evened out, it balanced out to an okay reading month. So yeah, thank y'all for watching my video for the third time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.